Morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. We've got a lot to cover today, and we're super excited to bring it to you. Welcome back, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. We want to welcome you back to Mobile App Academy, where we show you how to build and configure mobile apps on the Now platform. My name is Charlie Steiner, as always, a product marketer here at ServiceNow. And today we'll be discussing building native screens versus web screens on mobile. So if you're just joining us for the first time, I'd love to give you a big welcome. This is a live building series that focuses on managing and building out mobile apps in real time. Our product experts uh, are here providing guidance and in the chat to answer your, any of your questions. We'll be giving best practices, answering your questions throughout, um, and really here to, to help you. So do get in touch. We host these Mobile App Academy sessions every two weeks here on Zoom at 10 a.m. Pacific, and our recordings are posted to YouTube Thursday morning specific time. So be on the lookout for those if you want to uh, rewind anything we discuss. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this session and how we can improve going forward. So whether that's here in the chat or on our mobile apps and platforms community page, let us know. And we'd love to hear your feedback on any future topic discussions uh, or on this topic if you liked it what you didn't like. So do get in touch as well. With all that being said, love to introduce our senior product manager on the mobile team, David Ha, to get things started off. David? Thanks for the intro, Charlie. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our Mobile App Academy. My name is David Ha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow. I also have Fuho with me, who is a solution architect, also on the mobile team. Um, and we want to give a warm welcome to everyone joining us live here today. So jumping straight into the topic for today, uh, we will be covering when to build native versus web on the ServiceNow mobile apps. Or in other words, how do I uh, migrate some of my now platform's existing workflows to the native mobile apps? You know, I might have some pre-existing forms or record producers with some client scripting. How do I go and build those on my ServiceNow agent client or even my now mobile client? Um, although some of these use cases uh, may not be supported natively on our mobile platform today, uh, you know, we want to explore what are those available workarounds that I have uh, to get those on mobile as a web view until the mobile platform is able to support these use cases natively in upcoming releases. Okay, and uh, for today's session, this will be on a Paris instance. Uh, we will be building our flows today on the ServiceNow agent client using the out of the box field service uh, mobile plugin. And you know, regardless of the instance build that you're on, majority of the configurations today will pretty much be similar across other releases. Um, and before we get started, I just want to share some resources. If you are new to mobile, we recommend that you first check out some of our self enablement resources, such as our mobile migration, uh, my, our mobile guidebooks, I'm sorry, and white papers um, that you can find on our mobile community site. And essentially, each one of these walks you through uh, you know, mobile implementation best practices, uh, migration best practices, as well as mobile UX, uh, UX best practices so that you can learn and improve the overall design of your mobile apps. And if you're looking for more hands-on training, uh, we also have the Now Learning site, which will teach you the necessary mobile developer fundamentals around how to, getting, uh, how to get started with Mobile Studio. Um, and of course, we also have Mobile App Academy, where, which you can access all the past recordings, as Charlie said, on our mobile community site. Okay, with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. So here's a quick, slide on some of the unique native features that are on a mobile platform today. And the idea here is, you know, with all the resources and investment that we're pouring uh, in from ServiceNow uh, into the new mobile apps and platform, the goal here is to make the customers and users more productive and happy. The better the user experience that we can build for agents and employees, the more likely they'll want to use it on a daily basis because it's actually helping make their lives easier. Um, and some of the mobile, mobile micro moments we enable for them on mobile is making them more productive. Uh, but once we actually have um, a customer who's ready to implement our mobile solution, there's a few things that they'll encounter, whether it's on the ServiceNow agent client or the now mobile client. And the first thing I want to mention is, although these two clients are built on the same mobile platform, their implementation experiences are completely different as of Paris. First, because they represent two different personas, agent for the fulfiller, and then now for the general employee. But also from the developer's perspective, it's completely different developing experience, uh, depending on which client you're trying to implement. Let's start with a ServiceNow agent client, for example. So with agent, typically customers will start with an out-of-the-box experience, whether it's ITSM mobile or a field service mobile. Uh, in fact, majority of our customers typically use or start with an out-of-the-box app, and then they make very minor modifications to it. Um, for any missing requirement, 
requirements that they might need in the workflow, they'll then have to use Mobile Studio or the platform UI to fill in the gaps. And some of the most common modifications that they, they take on these out of the box workflows on Agent include uh, things like adding, removing, or updating fields on their list applets, um, updating or creating new actions, or even applying UI policies or UI styling that they might already have from the platform and that they need to migrate that over to mobile. Um, and there's also the scenario that if you're a mobile classic customer in the past, um, there's a few common use cases they'll run into as well, such as, you know, I might have some dashboards that I had for mobile classic. How do I migrate those over onto the new mobile apps? Um, or how do my fulfillers pull up the QR barcode scanner? Um, and also things like how do I configure related lists, navigations, or even carry parameters so that I can see additional information on those records. So with each of those use cases, I've actually hyperlinked each one um, that we've possibly covered in a past mobile app academy, or it might be a link to product documentation. Um, but the idea here is that these are reference slides for you to go ahead and kind of look into those if these are scenarios that affect you. Um, and you know, the more common uses that we hear from all of you, we'll, we'll typically try to cover, uh, cover them in future app academies. Um, so again, this is a great reference slide for common use cases and getting started with ServiceNow Asian or Now Mobile. And we'll post this deck along with the live recording on our mobile community site in the next couple of days. Uh, and again, this doesn't cover every single use case. Uh, we're typically trying to uh, cover common use cases that our team have run into so far. And we wanna share these learnings back to our mobile app academies. Uh, but if there are other major use cases or issues, we would love to hear them. Um, from the Now Mobile side, it's a similar process, right? You're leveraging the out-of-the-box workflows for catalog services and so forth. And then you're trying to make uh, some modifications to those pre-existing workflows um, and you know, configuring custom use cases to meet your organization's requirements and creating that self-service experience for your general employees. And I've also hyperlinked those common use cases, which you can come back to later. Okay. Um, there's a lot going on in the next couple slides. I'm not planning on going through each one, but again, these are great reference slides um, that you can go through on your own time. Fu and I have documented many of the common use cases that we get from customer conversations around mobile implementations. And you know what we've realized is many of these use cases that customers might perceive as blockers, they might not actually be blockers at all. Uh, it might just be that they're not as familiar with our mobile solution yet. For example, um, you know sometimes we'll hear native charts don't support all the charts that I have on the, on the now platform. And you know this might restrict a customer from deploying their mobile apps without having those reports. Um, but you know, if you're familiar with our native reporting capabilities as a Paris, you would know that today we support single scorecards, time series reports, latest score PA widgets, bar and donut charts. Those are all supported natively. And again, native is the ideal solution um, because it, it results in the greatest end user experience. But you don't necessarily have to go down that path, right? Um, if a customer has a pre-existing dashboard with a bunch of reports that we don't support natively today, then you can go down the web path. Um, which you can configure a URL applet or a smart button that just redirects them to that dashboard on Service Portal. Again, maybe it's not the most ideal experience because web reports, they don't have the greatest viewing experience on mobile. But if this is a workaround that the customer is okay with having for now, then this is certainly something that they can do um, on any one of our uh, uh, mobile apps. And again, we would love to hear any gaps that we have um, today. And you can kind of share those requirements to us through the idea portal on mobile community. So if there's a specific native chart that we haven't yet support, that's kind of where you can share uh, feedback with us so that our internal teams can have further discussions on it um, and then prioritize for future road mapping. Okay. Um, and then again, these are the workarounds uh, and common issues uh, for now mobile. Uh, feel free to check these out on your own time as well when we post this on mobile community. But um, let's actually, um, move on to the core topic for today, when to build native versus web, uh, or in other words, uh, when do I know when to use the native components versus just redirecting users to the web screen uh, on their service portal or, or the platform. And these are a few common reasons why customers might want to choose uh, or go down the web path. There's really no right or wrong answer here, but ideally the customer should only go down the web route if they have to. Otherwise they should be building native because um, it's the best uh, experience for their end users. And um, some of the most common use cases where native is not supported is anytime customers have record producers that might have client scripts, uh, or there's a web form that contains an element that we don't uh, support natively today, 
such as uh, variables. Um, we'll actually cover both of these uh, workarounds in today's live building session. Uh, but just to call out a few other uh, scenarios uh, why customers might go down the web path. Um, uh, the other reason is, you know, sometimes they're look, just looking for the fastest path to deployment. Um, although the workflows might not be the greatest experiences on mobile, it does require the least amount of effort in implementing. For example, um, you know, they, they might not have the largest team or they have limited resources and they're just looking for the quickest and easiest way to roll out mobile. Sometimes they'll understand that, you know, this is their first pilot V1 and they'll have the intention of coming back to improve their, their flows later and, you know, embedding it with more native components. Uh, but right now they might just want to roll out something, uh, something that works. Um, and that's might be a reason for them to go down the web path. Another common reason is, um, you know, they might have built a very custom record producer with lots of client scripting with all their custom CSS formatting. And it could be that that web app just looks so much better um, since a lot of that functionality might not be supported natively quite yet in Paris. And it might just be easier to create a URL applet to redirect to that web form. Um, so those are a few common reasons why uh, customers might go down the web path. Uh, but the key idea here is, you know, we want to make sure our customers who have the intention of building the most optimal mobile experience for the end users, that they are taking advantage of the native capabilities where they should be. And so we want to share uh, all these resources and common use cases to make sure that you're aware of those common workarounds in your own implementations. Okay. Um, with all of that said, let's now focus in on a couple of these common use cases in our workarounds. We're going to cover one of the most common issues that we hear about all the time, and that's how do I migrate my pre-existing record producers to mobile, which uh, requires client scripting, or I have pre-existing client uh, record producers, and it's on the platform, and I don't want to do additional work. Um, how can I migrate those, those over to mobile? And again, these are just two of the most common use cases. There's a lot more um, that you can explore referencing the slides from earlier. Uh, but when you're tackling any one of these scenarios from mobile, these are three things to always consider in your implementation. First, you're going to need to define your persona, whether it's for the fulfiller or for your general employee, uh, because this will help you determine whether you'll be taking advantage of any of our out-of-the-box experiences um, and which client these out-of-the-box experiences will be rolling out to, and to which of those users and roles. The second step is really to define your use case. Um, so if you have pre-existing record producers on platform, what are those use cases? And does it make sense for your end users to do it on mobile or not to display at all because it just makes more sense for them to complete that flow on their laptops or computers. So that's something to consider. Um, and the third one is now that you determine these use cases are important for mobile, how do you wanna visualize that data? Um, you need to understand what our native capabilities are as a Paris and what our limitations are as well. Um, and you know, if you have reports that can be visualized uh, natively on a list applet, uh, such as a group list or a map, um, then you know, use Mobile Studio or Mobile Platform UI to configure those natively. But if there's a use case that isn't supported natively, um, then the workaround is to use that URL applet or a smart button to re redirect your users to the web form. Um, and so now I'm going to actually pass it over to Fu, who's going to walk us through uh, what we're about to build for today. Uh, so Fu, the floor is all yours. Thank you, David. Thank you, Charlie. Um, I want to show you what um, there are two limitations right now uh, with uh, our mobile is what David just said is client scripting is not supported. And um, things like variable sets, especially multi-variable sets, are not supported. So. Um, before we dive into implementation, uh, the workaround. I want to show you what a client script and a, uh, a variable set uh, is. So here's a typical um, portal page. And I want to show you an example of uh, client scripting uh, form, uh, a form with a client script. And uh, I'm going to use one that's out of the box. Um, so one of them, if we search for um, services, Uh, requests. So here's a typical one. So you go here and there's a form and there are two regal buttons. Uh, and you notice that when you're in departments, um, it kind of filters down like the departments. And when you select on group, 
uh, this label changes the group and this drop down changes as well. And so what this client script is doing is that it's detecting an on change event. And this is, and it's basically populating this, uh, this drop down, right? So that's, that's one example. And the other example is uh, if you type in corporate bulk order, this one has a, a much more um, complicated use case. So here you notice this is form and you notice that there's a thing right here that says add. When you click on it, uh, a moto appears. And in this moto, um, you can select uh, multiple um, different uh, uh, device types to order. And then it adds it to a, a list. And then you can order another one. I want to order a Samsung, uh, different configuration, and just keep on doing uh, multiple uh, data sets. So this is what you call a multi-variable sets. Um, the thing is, is that when you, if you have this in your web form and you wanna actually um, pass over this kind of uh, functionality into a native solution, uh, native cannot do it because uh, our native functions are, are very limited on what we can do. Unlike uh, a web where web you can basically, it's, it's free form, right? You can do almost anything you want. Um, so uh, that shouldn't stop you from uh, not going to our, our native application. Um, so I'm gonna show you uh, a workaround for this. And so um, here is my native, uh, here's my native application. And what we're gonna do is the two uh, forms that we, we saw, uh, I'm gonna create a, um, an icon here of uh, my shortcut. And we're gonna create a, uh, a list applet. And within the list applet, we're going to transition and pass the sys ID of the form into a web applet. Okay. So uh, I'll go slow and I'll show you um, what I'm trying to do. And if you, can I share one uh, quick slide real fast before you sure. start building? Um, let me share this uh, one last screen real fast just to set up this scenario. So I, I think uh, what we're about to dive in uh, into is uh, we need to first you know define the persona. Uh, we're going to start with the ServiceNow agent client, and I think Fu is going to be building inside of the out of the box field service mobile app. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. Um, and uh, you know the out of the box field service mobile app is an out of the box experience that you can install on your instance, right? It's available in the store, um, and it's going to come with these preloaded applet launchers uh, and applets. And we're simply going to make a modification to it. And you know, I, I think the use case that we're adding to it is there might be a record producer um, that lives on your platform, such as adding uh, corporate devices, so that it enables your uh, fulfiller technicians to be able to add. Uh, uh, I guess I give out corporate devices to new employees at a building, right? And so we're gonna set up that um, uh, applet for you so that the technician is then able to access it from that out of the box mobile app. Um, and then Fu already described how we're gonna build it. So I'll go ahead and give it back to you, Fu. So you dive into it. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again. Okay, let's see, where is my model? Okay, there it is. Okay. Um, so I wanna give you guys a little bit of uh, like, uh, how does this look uh, in the tables uh, out of the box stuff? Um, if we go to uh, catalog uh, script client, um, this is where, uh, your catalogs uh, where they contains um, this, um, the client scripts. Uh, if I search for the one we just I demoed, service. Uh, okay. It's not here. It's um, catalog item. Oh. 
let's search for the name of it. Oh, I can just check any one. So basically, you notice how uh, these um, these are basically record producers and they have some type, like an on change. And so this is what I wanted to show you. For example, uh, let's select this one and maybe I can see the script. And so you can see that there's client scripting involved, right? And so if your customer has um, pre-existing or very complicated client scripts, um, we can't, we can't port this over to a native solution. Um, so we're gonna create a native list to display this. And then um, we can create a, um, a function that will point to that, uh, that web form. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to studio and we're gonna create that uh, native uh, solution first, which is the applet, uh, the list applet. So I'm going to pick the um, the right scope. Okay, so I'm going to create a, a typical um, an applet. So I'm going to say, uh, let's see, my forms. Uh, let's pick something. Oops. And let's make this a different color. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the, we're going to create a data item. Um, but for this data item, uh, we're going to, we're going to, um, select the two forms that we're interested in, in the, um, for the out of the box stuff. So let's call it my forms. And this, uh, the, the record producers actually live in a table called uh, SC category cat item category. Okay. Um, and the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna identify those two uh, forms that I talked about. The first one was the uh, service catalog requests. And the other one was the corporate uh, mobile device bulk order. That's the one with the multivariable set. So let's search for um, the catalog item. And we're going to do uh, first one is service request this one and we also want to do uh, or um, the bulk one so the corporate bulk order okay so we're just basically uh, fetching those two elements uh, in our data item and we're going to my forms all right so next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the pattern here and we don't need this stuff we just want a simple one line and we're just going to show uh, the catalog name Okay, so our applet is done. Uh, we don't really care about the form screen. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it. So here in my uh, ALP, I'm gonna add it under my shortcuts. So go to the ALP. And then by ALP, you mean Apple Launcher, right? Uh, not ALP. So Applet Launcher page. Um, so we're gonna go to the My Work. And here we see my shortcut. And this is what we have here. And we're going to add the applet we just created. Okay, so the setup is, is pretty basic and I'm going to, oops, I'm gonna refresh this. 
And there's a form. And when I click on it, you notice how we got the two, um, the, the two record producers. But when I click on one of these guys, uh, there's, it goes to a form. Um, we don't really want that. So we wanted to actually transition into our, our web form. So um, to order to do that, uh, typically you would think um, a most common mistake is that we're seeing is um, you create a URL applet. So a URL applet is basically almost, it's like a web form. And in the URL applet, um, we can pass, so let's do this. Uh, I want to show you what I'm talking about. So in the URL applet, um, you basically have to provide a, a, a URL. And um, this URL would contain um, the, the link to your form. So if I click on here, you notice how there's a structure here, it says SPID, uh, this stuff. So in your URL applet, would typically add this in your URL applet. Um, however, there's one problem with URL applets. Um, typically you would do a navigation function and within your navigation function, uh, you would wanna pass a record like this sysid over to your, navig your URL applet. Um, and then uh, it would it would it would redirect you to this this page. However, you cannot do that with a URL applet. Um, when you so I want you guys to do this at home. Um, try creating a URL applet, and then you'll see that um, when you create a navigation function, it's not going to uh, recognize the URL applet because um, <clears throat> Navigation functions only work for parameterized screens. You can only pass parameters uh, to a parameterized applet, not a URL applet. So you can't, you can't really pass this. Um, however, if you hard code this, then it would work. So I'll just make that clear to you guys. So you cannot pass this, very, this, this ID using a URL applet. Um, so I'm going to show you a trick, a uh, workaround uh, um, by not using a URL applet. And the trick is to use a thing called a smart button. Okay. So um, we go down to functions. Uh, so in functions, there are three, three types. So I was talking about this navigation function. Uh, you cannot use this because we want to pass something dynamic to a URL applet. The trick is, is to use a smart button. Okay. So let's create a smart button. And we'll call it my form. Oh, I'll call it nav to my form. And because this is going to be a URL, uh, there are different types. Uh, we're going to use a URL here. Pretty simple. Make sure your context is record. Uh, and I'll talk about it why, because Actually, I'll tell you right now, because this right here is a record. And we want to pass the sys ID of corporate mobile device to a URL. And the same with this. We want to dynamically pass these records. So in order to do that, you got to make sure that the context is record. The table itself is a table that we've um, that we fetch from the navigation um, uh, the, from the data item. So that is, uh, double check, it is SC item category. And the field that we wanna pass is the catalog item. So this is the sys ID of uh, these record producers, okay? Oh, and then I have to um, just put in the label here. So let's call it um, open by uh, Okay, so now we have a smart, uh, a smart button. 
Now, here's another trick. We want to, whenever you create a function, we need to associate this function uh, to a, uh, in your applet. So let's go to your applet and it's, um, it's my applet. Typically a function, when you go to your applet, you go to your function, typically it's either um, for a list, it's either a top menu function, which lives somewhere up here. We don't want that, right? We wanna be able to click on one of these and then transition. So it has to be on this item. However, when you go to here and swipe, uh, you can technically add it here. Uh, actually, you, you can't add it to the swipe function because we don't want it to swipe. We just want to click on it and go to um, uh, go to the uh, the, the, the web uh, applet. So um, this is not also possible as well, right? So the one the the way to do this is you have to put it on an item view, okay? And in Mobile Studio, uh, here's a limitation. It, uh, you cannot add it to the item view here. And the only way to do that is you have to go to uh, platform UI and add it there. Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna go to, oops. Uh, let's go hey, to, Fu, just to clarify um, uh, the list item again real fast, can you uh, show your mobile device real fast? Yep. Um, so typically, you know, this we're in like this is a list screen, right? This is and show this list screen shows us two records. So typically, if, if we were to open up one of these records, it would take us to the form screen with additional details. But I think what you're trying to do is you don't want to take them to the form with additional details. You just want them to be able to tap on this item and it'll take you to the, the URL. Is that correct? Correct. Right. So right now it's going to a form, which we don't want. We want them to go to uh, the web form, not the native form. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna apply um, the smart button. So remember the smart button. So we created the smart button, nav to my form, and it's going to a URL, right? Some URL we haven't defined that yet, and we're just gonna pass the sys ID of this catalog item. But we will need to attach this to this element here. And Mobile Studio, there's a limitation on that, so. The only way to do that right now is to go to platform UI. And so um, we want to get down to this level. And this is what you call a, a, a master item. Okay. So if I go to sys sg master item. Uh, instead of going to the straight to the master item, which might be a little confusing, how about we go through the applet itself and just start clicking through each table? That way we know where we're at. You know? Sure. Okay. So let's go to, oh, let's go to the um, applet launcher. Let's go there all go. to the top. Okay. So uh, let's go to the top. So applet launcher. Um, so this is oops, right here. So this is the applet launcher and it's called my my work. So in your Apple launcher at the, at, the, um, at the high end, we're gonna go down to my work. I think it's and then we know it's the uh, field service scope, right? Because we're building inside of the out of the box field service mobile app. I think one of them is for ITSM. If you look to their- uh... Oh, this one? Oh, no. Yeah. I think it's this one. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna go to the uh, AOP and we're gonna go down to the body. And as you, as you can see, this is the section here, my shortcuts which is right here. We're gonna drill down to the section and we should see four applets right here. So I'm gonna unlock this and I wanna to go to my form. And we're gonna go down to the list screen. So we're basically drilling down, um, down to the master item. So if you're not very familiar with how this works, uh, David does have, um, uh, we do have a video and um, some documentation on how this hierarchy works. Um, so once we get onto the list screen, we're gonna go down to the item stream segment. And then I'm gonna keep on drilling down to the my forms items uh, stream. And then here's the, the master item. Okay, so this master item is basically uh, 
this right here. This, it's like, um, I guess it's like a, an object-oriented program. It's like, a, it's like a, a parent class and it has this uh, element here. And when we create the smart button, we want to assign it to this master item. And in order for to do that is we have a thing called function instance belongs to master item. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new function instance. So function instance means that you're going to apply that function onto some form of like uh, in, this, in this element. So let's create a function instance. And so the function instance, we'll just call it um, nav to my form. And we're going to call it uh, the function that we've, this is the function of our mass of our smart button. So it was, I think we called it nav to my form. Um, the label, you can call it anything we want because it's not gonna show up anyways. Nav to my form. And here's the important thing. So this is the location. Um, so function instance basically tells uh, the app where to put your function at. So there are a, a few, there's top. Uh, here's the two swipes um, that you can see in studio. So this is the top menu function. This is the swipes. And then there's field. We don't have to do the field because the field is actually on the form. We are in the list. So we wanna do the list item. Okay, so this is, a, this is a very important distinction. This location is actually very important. It tells you where you wanna put your function. So when it hits submit, so now um, it goes, uh, now we have a function instance on, uh, now we apply the smart button here. But now we wanna do is um, we wanna pass, um, so let me see. Go to mobile studio. Uh, mobile Paris four or two? Oh, sorry. Good catch. Okay, so now we want to pass this URL, a URI. And you notice how in Studio, uh, here's Studio. Here's my smart bun. I don't have a way to add the URL. Like it doesn't, doesn't know where or, or how. Uh, typically in Studio, this URL is actually getting it um, from this field. But this field is not a URL. It is actually a sys ID, okay? We are basically taking the sys ID and we're going to the backend um, tables and we're going to add the URL there. So this is another important distinction. So when I go into the function instance and I go to the function and I open the function, this is the smart button function. This function is exactly the same function in my studio. Notice that mobile studio doesn't have all the fields that I, I need. But when I go to the UI platform, this is the exact same function. It's a URL type, it's a smart button. Notice how I have more options here. For example, take source uh, value from field uh, and so forth. When I uncheck this, you notice how I now can add a link URL. In Studio, I do not have that option because in Studio, this smart button is applying to the field itself. There's a limitation on Studio. It's applying to the field and it's assuming that the field is a URL, okay? So this is, the, this is the trick, right? Go to platform, navigate down to the master item, go to your function and you can see this option here. You get more option. Now, the next thing I wanna do is now we can define our URL link. So I'm gonna uncheck this. And now we want this, but we don't wanna hard code that, right? Uh, this has to be dynamic. 
And this is why I said that in studio, this category item is a sys ID of this record producer, which is this. So how do we pass this variable over to our URL? So let's take the base URL, which is SP with that. We'll paste it here. So the, the next trick is how are, are we gonna pass the, the sys ID over? Okay, so um, it's typically like, like this with some variable, like X, whatever, okay? But how do you know what variable uh, are we looking at? So let's go to, um, let's go to, I wanna show you something else as well. To do that, we have to go to the table definition and I'm going to show you how to actually get the, um, the actual uh, variable. Um, so let's go to. So the table we're looking at is SC uh, underscore cat underscore items. So it's SC underscore cat underscore item underscore. Okay, and now I'm gonna search for, let's say, for example, um, oh no, I wanna do table, I think. Oh, uh, I think it's called folk. Oh, I gotta go to the table, table definition. Um, and it's SC it's item. Here. Okay, so this basically, um, I was referencing this category item. And when you click on it, um, the, the, the table name is actually called SC cat item. This is what you need for the variable that we're gonna reference. So copy that and we're going to put, put it in here like so. Okay, so you have, make sure you have to um, have these two brackets uh, to distinguish it, it's a variable. And the next thing you need to do is find out what is the actual variable name of this table. So as I mentioned, uh, go down to the table definition, to the dictionary, and then find the column name. This is what it actually needs. And that is it. So I'm gonna save that. Okay. So let's see if it works. I'll click on the form. I'm going to click on the corporate. Notice how it's transitioning to corporate mobile device, and it's going to exactly uh, the website. And if I go to the next, uh, go back, and I go to the service catalog requests, notice it's also going to the service catalog requests, and it's passing the correct sys ID. And when I click on uh, group, Notice how this label changes and also the amount of uh, list changes as well. You know, I click back to department, uh, my department changes as well. Right. And then when I go to um, the corporate mobile device and let's look at, look at the multivariable sets. So when I click on it, a modo appears and I'm able to add, I'm also able to keep on adding uh, additional as well, and then submit. So um, step one is basically this, right? Um, is now you're able to go create a native list 
and then transitioning it over to your web form, which is your basically your record producer form. Um, the one thing that you notice is that when I move my finger, it's not really optimized for the web experience, right? Um, you click on add and it's kind of out of place and I can kind of like pinch and so forth. So this, this web form was designed, this record producer is actually designed for a desktop version. Um, for, um, for mobile, there's another one, uh, exact same thing, but we, it's called um, MESP. So when I click on changes to MESP, which is more uh, suited for mobile experience because it has a different CSS and hit save. And I go back and let's refresh this. Click on my forms and I click on the corporate um, mobile device uh, bulk order. Notice it's a little bit different now. Uh, when I move my fingers around, uh, I can't, um, it, it's always staying in place. When I hit add, remember there was a moto in the past? When I hit add, now the whole section is a, a form. And when I uh, uh, change the uh, device type, it just transitions to a different form and it transitions back. And when I hit add, it adds right there. And so this is a, this is a more optimized version of um, your record producers um, for mobile. So um, make sure you have this as MESP. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna migrate over your out of the box stuff, uh, but if you do have legacy uh, forms, uh, make sure you uh, the CSS is optimized for mobile experience. Um, so, any questions on on this um, before I kind of do a recap? Uh, we did get a question from Joel in the chat, and uh, I think. Uh... He uh, asked a question that that uh, concerns a, a lot of uh, developers who kind of build stuff on the mobile platform, and it's you know how much of this going back to the mobile platform UI will be done in Quebec or another future release of ServiceNow, or is this just a fundamental limitation of Studio? So I guess this question is really addressing you know why do I have to figure out when to build stuff in Studio versus build stuff on mobile platform uh, or, or on the platform UI side? So we're actually addressing a lot of that in our upcoming roadmap. Um, and we're taking a few first steps in Quebec, but it's we're not quite there yet in Quebec. But um, if you stay tuned on our Rome roadmap webinar, we're, uh, we'll be hosting that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, continue checking uh, uh, for our updates, but we're gonna host a Rome roadmap and we're gonna share exactly what's gonna be changing about the developer experience. Um, but in the meantime, until we get into Quebec and Rome, we actually released a mobile implementation guidebook as well as a mobile migration guidebook. And uh, as well as the mobile hierarchy deck and the mobile hierarchy uh, YouTube video, you know, going through all those four things, you'll understand you know, when to navigate between the platform UI as well as the mobile studio. Um, and we talk about all the action locations that, that Fu was talking about. You know, what is a list item versus a, a top menu? And we address uh, you know, some of the most common backend tables such as you know, master items, what does that do? What is uh, uh, an item view and so much more. So definitely check out all those resources that you can find on mobile community. And I'll send those links in the chat as well. Um, and it looks like we got another question uh, around uh, when developing to both platform UI and studio, what's best practices for promoting code for mobile now? Not exactly sure what that question means. Um, who do you think, should we unmute? and get clarification. Uh, um, let me take a crack at this. Well, when developing both platform UI and Studio, so... Um, promoting code. For, uh, yeah, let's unmute. Mute. Okay. Uh, application scope update sets, interesting. Okay, I was thinking about like uh, scripted action items uh, versus uh, script includes. When you're talking about application scope and update sets. Okay, I just un unmuted you. Um, 
Faisal, Faisal, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask us directly. Uh, Hi, uh, yes. Can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Yep, yeah, so um, obviously when you've, uh, you've got an application scope, you're doing stuff in the mobile studio, but then when you go into the platform UI and you're actually doing it in the at-the-box scopes, um, you have having to create update sets so, or, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, combine all that code and push it through between different environments. And um, because you're jumping between lots of different application scopes, it gets quite messy. I'm just wondering what the, the best, best practice is because I found it very messy to, to move stuff. Yeah, so um, when you type in my company, uh, this is where your mobile app actually with the scope of it so you type in my company, um, you go to development and you notice that we've created this thing. Uh, I forget which one we call it, David, like the scope that we used. We were using uh, the field service mobile app, uh, out of the box field service. Oh, it's field service. Okay. So when you create your yes. own custom, uh, are you, are you going to use the out of the box stuff or do you have your own custom? So yeah, I'm referring to um, uh, modifying out of the box in the, um, Mobile now, or now, now mobile, sorry. The, uh, the customer experience. Right, okay. And then, and then you have your update set. Did you create an update set uh, when you make changes? Well, I believe that's the only way I can do it because it's not available in mobile studio, so. Yeah, you have to do it in your mobile UI because it's not available in studio, yeah. correct, yeah. That's the best way to do it, it's to, it's to um, use uh, platform UI to do it. Unfortunately, it's not just a mobile platform um, uh, kind of poor experience when kind of uh, updating. It's kind of across service now. It's uh, definitely a, an issue across the platform today. Uh, but as we said, that's kind of the, the, the way to do it through, through the platform UI side, um, right. unfortunately. But, you know, it's good that we are raising those issues and uh, our internal teams are aware of it. So I'm hoping that that's something they'll address in uh, future roadmaps. Wonderful. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Fu, do you want to go and wrap up um, and kind of summarize? Yeah. So I think, I think the main takeaway for you guys is that um, there are some things that Mobile Studio can and cannot do, right? Uh, I just showed you one way, right? Uh, if, if, you've, if you've read through our documentation about smart buttons, smart buttons really typically apply on the field, okay? And this is why in here's Mobile Studio, I have a smart button URL. I can't define a URL. It assumes a URL is on the field. There's a way to over, is there's a way around this, right? And so the takeaway is go to, go to platform UI, you get a lot more options, okay? Again, this, 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 um, this, this smart button function, uh, you can't apply it into an applet uh, on your function instance um, in Mobile Studio. The only way to do it is you have to go to platform UI down to the master item and then put your function instance there, okay? So it's gonna be a combination of these, these two worlds that you guys, and I, I'm, if you wanna do a lot more advanced stuff, uh, it's highly recommended that you understand how mobile UI works, uh, platform UI works and how our hierarchy works. Um, once you understand that, you have a much deeper understanding and you can push the envelope on how you're going to build these things, right? So I think that's the main takeaway. Uh, hopefully, I, you know, this stuff, uh, you know, you guys find this helpful. Um, again, you know, understanding how parameters are passed, understanding what the limitations are, understanding how to use platform UI versus mobile studio. Mobile studio, I use mobile studio just to set up the basic foundation. And then I use platform UI to get down to the stuff that Studio can do. So hopefully that's, that's helpful for you guys. That's a great wrap up. Thank you, Fu. And uh, to better understand what you know, mobile Studio can do versus what you need to configure on a mobile platform, I did share a uh, essentials training link on our mobile community site. And that'll give you a direct link into our implementation guidebook, which ad addresses you know, where to build those things. Um, and that pretty much wraps up our mobile app academy for today. Um, thank you everyone for, for joining us for today. If you have any further questions, feel free to keep asking us on the mobile community site uh, where our internal teams are always um, kind of going through that. 
And um, next, in the next session, we'll be covering uh, what's new for Now Mobile in Paris. So stay tuned for the latest updates uh, there. Uh, but besides that, thank you all for joining us in today's session. And uh, we hope to see you in the next session.